This is a medicine cub. This has his grandmother. We were on it. She brought the fire across the water. This is a lightning well. Its scientific name is Busicon contrarium. While other snail shells spiral to the right, the lightning well spirals to the contrary direction, to the left. When my mentor was talking to me about carving, I was like, how do you never move the Dremel? And he goes, well, we always move to the left, so I'll always be turning the shell to the left and keeping the Dremel pretty much straight in my hand. This came off an uh, old piece of Muscogee pottery, and it's basically our dance patterns. Everything goes to the left. We dance to the left. I do carvings to the left. The reason we do that type of thing is we think it, it helps keep this middle world in balance. People see me doing this without this on me. <laughs> Chris Thompson is a Muscogee shell carver. Basically, when you're doing this stuff, you're, you're walking in two worlds. You have to be part of the world outside, but then I have to come back to my native side. A lot of people don't have any understanding that there are still Native Americans that live in this area. I think the perception is all of them got removed to Oklahoma, um, and that perception is not a surprise given the you know 1853 law that Natives weren't allowed to be in Florida, period, and then given the Jim Crow laws. At the Fred George Greenway and Park Museum, Tallahassee residents have the opportunity to get to know their native neighbors and learn about their culture. The Greenway is 170 acres, and Wildwood Preservation Society, it's open once a month for free lectures. It's very interesting to a lot of people to be able to see and have an opportunity to meet some of the native neighbors that they actually have. I'm 48 years old, and my dad is in his 70s, his early 70s. He is a ceremonial leader, and for about the last 20 years, he's been trying to gently move us into we can't keep all these things secret anymore because we're lo losing the young people. We have this opportunity, we have this place here. Things like Chris's shell carving. We have shell carvers. They used to not be available. That was something you would not be able to talk to them about because it's basically sacred chore, sacred task. There's not too many people in the Southeast that are still shell carving. We have probably about three artists that are doing it right now. A lot of people, they don't use medicine cups like these anymore. They actually use regular shells or little tin cups. And I started wanting to bring that back also where we can carry on the traditions of our ancestors. Which you see a lot in our shells, there'll be a representation of the upper world, the middle world, and the lower world. And this one right here tells the story of after we die. We play the ball game for the creator, the ball pole and the fish at the top. After we pass, we believe our spirit goes up that ball pole into the Milky Way. It's just an example of our ancestors riding a canoe across the Milky Way and then spiraling down. But that's, I did that one just because I never saw it done, so I wanted to do it. <laughs> it's not in any books, it's not in anything like that, it's just what I believe it would look like. A lot of people think that natives are very connected to nature, and certainly we are, the Muscogee people are, and our ceremonial cycles are based on that. In the springtime, we have the pollinators, the butterfly there, and basically they can do two things. They can spread love, spread pollen, and also carry souls. So again, everything in nature has its kind of duality, if you will, in the Muscogee world. So every time before I get ready to carve, um, we do a fast. It's almost like part of me is going into that shell. I have to feel that carving that I'm doing. There's a lot of times I won't even carve 
like if I'm upset because when I'm carving a piece for a person or so, I don't want to put that energy into the shell. There's been a month that I've went without carving because I had to get myself straight before I could even start working on pieces. For Misty and Chris, Muskogee medicine cups are no longer just ceremonial tools. They're a way to connect with people about their culture. It's one of those things where you can't imagine how someone else thinks until you've had an opportunity to talk to them about these things. And it's, it's new for them. For us, it's just the way we do. <laughs> for WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.